look at that nice shiny new leaf. Always nice to have a new leaf opening up on a plant that went through some ship and stress. The Dean McDowell. Popping open with some nice, stiff, glossy looking foliage. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. I don't just, like, I'm gonna just put it out there. I don't really have a video for you today, other than, well, what you're watching right now. Thought I'd throw something together just to, like, say hi, because I've been kind of committed over the last several years to uploading on Saturdays, unless, like, something dire is going on. So, here, this is... Okay, I don't even know how to start. Things are in complete and total disarray right now. Does this look different to anybody? Maybe? Probably? Used to be plants on here? Yeah, I've had to completely move, rearrange everything. Because, as I had mentioned in several videos so far, the whole house was getting new windows. And it got the new windows. There, it, look, shiny new window. And the beautiful? You can see right through it, just like the old one. But it's sealed now. The problem with getting new windows, which is, this is all news to me, is that you have to move everything. <laughs> you can't have anything, you know, within a few feet of those windows. And uh, there were some setbacks. The construction part of, like, sealing and building the outside frames is taking longer than expected. So uh, I wasn't able to put everything back, which was going to be what happened this week. My plan was... Okay, I'll pull the plants out, and then the windows will get installed, and then put the racks back, install the new rack, which I've talked about in multiple videos, so I have a whole new shelf system to go over here where these tables are, and how fun, get to rearrange all the plants, but sometimes things just don't work out the way that we want them to, and here we are. Everything is in complete and total just disarray and chaos out here. I had to pull all the plants off of here, got most of them moved onto that table, because this table wasn't blocking that window so I was able to get a lot of them over there but everything that was on the floor is now over here like there are things spread all over the place that need to be rearranged and put back into a more appropriate place right now I have plants just sitting on the floor in the dark over in the corner obviously not ideal not the way you want to go with things but I can't put them back until they're done with this situation here so here we are. It's actually Saturday morning. This video is going to be out hopefully in a couple of hours, depending on how long it takes YouTube to do the whole entire processing, checking, and all that stuff that for some reason seems to take longer and longer every single week. But other, this is just, uh, love to be able to bring out some fun projects, but it's just not an option this week to sort out the mercy of construction right now. It's going well. There haven't been any hiccups. That's one thing. Anytime you have something done around the house, there's always that paranoia of, okay, so it should go smoothly and simply, but what kind of problems are going to arise in the process? There were sort of some hiccups for the people doing the windows, and they realized that something about the way they had to build the frame on the outside was going to be much more complicated than they had anticipated. So that set them back a few days. They're still probably going to have to spend a couple more days here next week getting things finished up. That's not a big deal. I mean, it sucks for them. I feel bad for them because they have a schedule they'd like to keep, but... No major hiccups where you, like, find out that, like, oh, we just discovered that we have to rip this wall out and you have, like, $30,000 worth of repairs to make. Something like that. You know, those sorts of things. That didn't happen. That's a good thing. Then a lot of noise, a lot of banging people outside of the windows. I thought about maybe just pushing forward with things and getting some stuff done out here while they were here, but it just felt weird when there are humans standing right on the other side of the windows looking in here. I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. It, was just, it felt really cringy. So I didn't. There are, um, oh, I don't remember what I was about to say. I had some plant updates I could give if I could get to the plants early. I can't get to most of them. There also, the last video that came out, the comments just showed up in my app yesterday. Wednesdays, the other day of the week, there are always videos, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Wednesday's video went out, I think, about half an hour, an hour before YouTube crashed on Wednesday. So if you didn't get notified of a video, that's why YouTube went down. So the video never went out to being suggested or it's like the worst performing video I think I've ever uploaded because it went out during a crash. That's happened before. It's not the end of the world. But I did see comments. I'll make sure to reply to everybody here as soon as I get through with getting this video up. So y'all know that I saw your comments. I appreciate it. Thank you. Beneficials seem to be doing well out here. That video came out 
just a few days ago, but I filmed it about two and a half, three weeks ago. Still kind of soon to say whether or not the predator mites are doing much of anything. I am still seeing spider mites on some of the plants, but really only the plants that are the most prone to spider mites, like some of the calatheas, they are still showing some signs. Some of the heliconias were the ones that were on the shelves, were the ones that are over here in the pond, not so much. Maybe it's too moist over here for the spider mites and they just don't like it. I don't know, or there's just other plants around they seem to prefer, or I'm just not noticing them yet. That's also definitely a possibility that I just haven't seen them yet. Ladybugs seem to be doing well. They're all over the place. The smell, long gone. Haven't noticed that in quite a while. That was just like, I don't know, for an hour or two that I noticed it. Haven't smelled it since. Well, the heliconias. The last several videos that I've done, I have meant to, meant to mention the heliconias because I was giving updates on the ones that are in the pond here and then I just I just stopped, kept forgetting to do so. But there were people who were wondering how they were going to do in this more aquatic environment where part of the pot is submerged in the circulating water. That was an experiment. I put them in here knowing that it may not go wonderfully for them, but hoping just logically keeping in mind that the water's circulating, it's oxygen rich and it's warm that it should be just fine as long as they aren't in a soil that's really compacted, something that oxygen can move through, even if it's just oxygenated water, growing them hydroponically when you get to that point. They seem to be doing well so far. Haven't noticed a ton of movement out of the rostrata, which is bent over and leaning. I need to come in here. I think it'd be a good idea to give the Monstera a twist that this leaf right here isn't hanging over, because that does, I was about to say, it appears to be shading things. I think that that's kind of an understatement, right? You can clearly tell that this is shading things quite a bit. Regardless of that, what I do notice is that there's growth down in here. Don't know if we, you're not gonna focus, there we go. There's a good amount of growth coming out the bottoms of the containers on all three of them. So there's a Carmesita in here, which is the one in the very front, a Rostrata in the middle. And then I think the one in the back is a Tropic more than likely. Regardless, they do all seem to be doing well. The Rostrata not doing as well, which is surprising because Rostratas, I usually have a better time overwintering than most other Heliconias. They seem to not throw as much of a fit with the temperature shift between moving outdoors where it's nice, warm, and humid to being moved indoors where things are more mild. All oh, things are pretty warm and humid in here, so it's hard to really make much of an assessment with the way the growing conditions are in here versus when I used to keep them in the house or even just when I had different heating out here. Not seeing as much growth out of the bottom of the container with the Rostrata, but it has popped out a couple of new leaves on this, this stem right here. That leaf not looking so good. I reached over from the back earlier and I thought maybe there were spider mites, just judging from the coloration on there. Didn't see anything. That could just be a nitrogen thing, or this could have been one of the stems that flowered. Perhaps this did have a couple flowers on it over the summer, so maybe that's just an old stem that's about ready to die off. What I would like to see with it, though, would be some more growth from the inside. Like, seeing plenty of growth in there from the Carmesita, I'd like to see more movement on the inside, so I might be pulling these forward when I have a chance. Probably shouldn't go too much into that since hopefully next week. I would really hope by next week I can get in here and start moving the plants around, getting those new racks set up and really perfecting the way things are looking out here. That would be most ideal. So it's been long enough. I would like to get that ball rolling so we can finally sit back and relax out here and not just have all the chaos. There's just been so much chaos out here the last couple months. Being dramatic, there hasn't been a ton of chaos. It's just been a waiting game, waiting for the windows to get installed because I knew like there's no point in setting things up and arranging things a particular way if I'm going to have to move them all. Which I was right, I had to move a lot of stuff, so I'm glad that I didn't do that, but I'm, just, ugh, I'm so ready to get that done. I don't think there's any other plant updates to give, because for one, I can't get to most of the plants right now, not easily, and uh, the, the spider mites are doing their thing, ladybugs are doing their thing. The croton, I moved the croton, it's up there now. It looks, it looks good. There's a palm frond getting cut off. It looks so much better if that wasn't there. So I should probably find some shears and cut that frond down, but seems to be happier. It was down lower, like down on the ground. I moved it up here. There's a table right here for plants, more like medium sized four plants, just to make it easier to get light to them by having them up higher. And uh, I think it's responding well to that. The leaves are more upright and perky. They were, they weren't flat, 
it was, I don't know how to describe it. Do you ever have a house pipe and you're just like looking at it and thinking, it doesn't seem happy. I don't really know how to describe why it just didn't, it didn't look right. So I bumped it up where it was closer to the grow lights and it's just, it's more perky. I feel like that was all useless information since I'm having trouble describing what it was about the plant that made me think I needed to move it up. The foliage was a little bit more dull, not a lot, but a little bit, and uh, it wasn't as upright. You can look here where the new growth is, see how it kind of points up sort of in a V-shape pattern, like this, like so that's going up and that's going up. They were at more of a angle, hanging down before, so it just... It seemed like it needed to pick me up, so I picked it up and put it on the table. There's, That's what's going on with the croton. I had dropped the temperature down in here because I knew I wasn't going to be able to access the plants as much as I would like to be able to, so I didn't want to run the risk of anything being stimulated to grow a ton. So it's been about 71 in here for the last week, which is unfortunate because I have these new windows of... Hi. Hello. Can't just look past you. You look at that. Sorry, that was the ADD doing its thing. These windows, not as drafty. Really, not very drafty at all. There's a slight chill in the air, but I think that that's coming over from the garage doors, which I have um, that shiny material, like bubble wrap stuff that I can put on there, and hopefully that will help with that because it is. I feel like a cold breeze on my legs right now, and that's not good. The heater is also down pretty low. When I have the heater set up higher to keep things in the upper 70s and low 80s, I don't usually feel a draft. I think that's where it's coming from. I used my, well, where is it? I'll show you. The temp scanner right here. So the wall, 64.9, getting 62, 62, 60. Right there along the frame, 58.4. I know that doesn't seem very warm. However, prior to the new windows, it was almost the same temperature on this side as it was on the outside, right? Like within probably six to eight inches around the window and along the like frame that actually goes up to the glass. It's 24 degrees outside right now. So I'm gonna say that that is a pretty big improvement. Not warm, but an improvement. Once the heater's up and running more, when the plants are pushed back in place or the shelves with the plants on them are where they're supposed to be, I would imagine that that's going to keep things much, much, much warmer over there. I may end up, and y'all let me know what you think about this, or if you have any tips, I would appreciate it, because I'm just kind of spitballing ideas right here, the things that have occurred to me, but I haven't had time to actually process and go down the rabbit hole planning. They make, like, insulation films you can put over the glass on the windows. I, I'll talk to the window people about this next week when they're here, because I don't want to do anything that's going to be bad for the windows. But I was thinking about doing something. I just don't know what to add extra insulation to the spot. If that's really even necessary, I feel like if I'm going to focus energy on adding insulation, it needs to be on the garage doors over there. And the wall, this entire wall that's over here. See, that's not, can you tell from right here? See the problem? Yeah, that wall's not insulated. I drywalled and insulated the entire, well, not the entire, three main walls of the garage. Never did this one because I don't, I don't, can I, what do you do with all the stuff that holds the garage doors up? I can take it down. That's not a problem. I'm great at ripping stuff apart. No problem. Putting it back together? Uh, maybe not so much. I mean, that's how we learn, right? Tear something up and if you can put it back together, you'll learn something as long as you remembered what you did. But I don't. I don't know if that's in my wheelhouse because I've never even explored the option. But there's the spray foam insulation. I've been thinking about maybe doing that where they could potentially come in and just fill in the gaps in here and maybe forget the drywalling. I don't I don't really know if you need to be thinking about all this because when the heater's cranked up a few more degrees, it's pretty warm in here. But that was just supposed to be a conversation about the efficacy of the new windows. Seemingly doing a great job compared to the old ones, at least in the house, noticing a huge difference. I take you in there, but there's construction going on. It's very loud, it's very banging. I'm surprised we're not hearing it out here right now. That was another reason I hadn't been filming this week or vlogging because I'm pretty sure I mentioned there's people and a lot of noise in the background. But the inside of the house is much more quiet having the new windows and I can sit near the windows and not freeze my butt off when it's 20 degrees outside. That's very nice. Love the new windows. New windows are fun. And they're so clean. I love a clean, shiny window. Might be a new obsession. We don't know. This is boring. I don't want to talk about new windows for that long. We're going to do a plant channel here. So here are plants. 
Yay, plants. They seem to be happy. As I zoom in on a dead palm frond. Such happy plants. Got some new prop pots in the mail, which I'm excited about. It's basically just a slushy cup with holes in the bottom. It's just a clear plastic pot with a dome you put over the top. You've probably seen them before. You snap that onto the pot. Nifty. Oh, there are holes in the top, which if there's holes in the top of a slushy cup too. Those are really nifty for getting things rooted that are a little bit more temperamental. I have a whole bunch of alocasia. Are they macrohyses? I think they're macrohyses. Let's look. In here, I have a whole pot just full of tons of little offshoots that I've been getting going since midsummer. There's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's about a dozen or so of them in here. And I just have anticipated that their transplant might be a difficult one since they're small, trying to get them up in size before I get them moving. I figured these would be a good idea for the smaller offshoots that I decide to transplant that are going to be more difficult to transition. So once you cut up a plant that only has a couple of roots on it, you're asking for trouble. Really want to cut back on the air circulation and on any lack of humidity so that they don't have to compensate for anything, right? You want to preserve all the roots that you can when you pull them up and trim them and move them, but reality is you're potentially going to damage a root or two and they're little babies. They probably only have a few roots to begin with, so that's a big loss if anything happens. That's why I have these over here. Those are fun to work with. And I have a whole bunch of other plants out here that I want to start dividing and propping for some other projects that I think might be fun. I haven't fully decided how I'm going to pull the projects off, but I want to do them. I have an old TV that I don't know. Eh, it's in the construction mess. I don't want to show y'all because there's just the house is a disaster. It looks like a tornado went through there right now. Seriously, it's a total mess. I'm going to just keep that off camera because sometimes messes stress people out. I'm just trying to breathe and accept it because <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it until the windows are done. So it just is what it is. But the, I have an old TV with one of the ones that has a big frame on it. It's not that old. Like it's still a flat screen TV, but I think it's a 720p. I have no use for it. It doesn't even work. I thought it'd be fun to gut the TV and turn it into a living wall because it looks like a frame. It's already plastic. It'll be easy to waterproof it. And it has a neat edge on it that'll look neat with some lights on it. I shouldn't even be talking about it if I can't show it to you. I really want to show it to you. I really do, but I'm not going to. It's too messy. I'm not going to do it. Okay, I went ahead and I brought the TV outside so I could show it to you. There it is. It's a 42 inch, I think, which is weird because I replaced this with one of those Amazon Fire TVs. Those were on sale for Black Friday. It was like a $200 TV. It was a 43 inch and the 43 inch seems so much smaller than this, but it doesn't have the giant plastic frame around it. With that frame, I could like light it up very easily because there's a nice lip on the back to put some of those LED strips and then get the screen out of here. Just fill it with ferns and all kinds of fun things. And the back of it already has the hardware to mount it to the wall, a mount that's made for something heavy. I think this will be fun. And my brother-in-law, he knows how to recycle electronics. So he and I can go in there. He can teach me about taking this thing apart safely because there's apparently some components in here that contain mercury. So if you didn't know that, never throw a flat screen in the trash. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to take it to an electronic recycler. I just learned that because I have this one in an old plasma that I need to do something with. That's how I learned all this. That's how we got here. Could be fun. Lots of possibilities. Oh, and there's a new leaf opening up there on the busy. This isn't, this is not the time for a plant tour. <laughs> Everything's in total disarray, but that is kind of what started to happen over here earlier, isn't it? Started to go around talking about the plants. Here's the backside of everything. Just chaos. Plants all over the place, Croton up there leaning drastically. I put it in a milk crate because it just kept wanting to tip over. Isn't that seems to be helping. The more surface area, more edges to not tip over. I think I need to actually wrap it with some cord and pull it this way and probably tie the cord into the pot again. Shouldn't even be talking about this. It's not time for a plant tour. Last plant update, just remembered. Remember a week or two ago, I hung a bromeliad up over here that had survived some cold, but I said, it probably didn't really survive the cold and to give it a few days. Well, a few days passed, it turned brown and it turned to mush and died. So if you're wondering, that's what happened to that bromeliad. I'm going to stop at this point because it's just getting to a point where it's just rambling and nonsensical. But I wanted to hop on, say hello, wish everybody a happy weekend, and uh, that everything's fine. If I had missed uploading today, we'd been getting lots of messages, which I appreciate. People asking if I'm okay. Life is good. Life's great, actually. Just got the construction stuff going on. Hopefully they'll be wrapped up in a few days. What's going on with y'all? Experience with your windows? I could rant. Oh, oh, ooh, should I rant? 
Uh, no, I'll save it. I had some things pop into my head about the first company that quoted Windows, which was Anderson and their costs and their sales approach. There's a lot I want to say, but I just won't. Just going to say, personally wouldn't recommend. If you just you want to comment down below, just take a wild guess at what they quoted for 23 windows that are pretty much just like that. Just like this right here, just a standard window with the grids on the inside. Take take a moment, comment down below. Let's see who gets closest to what they said. Did you do it? Did you have a moment to make your guess? $106,000. 106, that, 100 and that's a house. It's a small house, it's a fixer up, or maybe a nice house in certain areas, but six figures for 23 windows. <laughs> What the even heck? No. So needless to say, did not go with Anderson because what the hell? Ridiculous. And they were bragging about some special warranty. These windows that got here, they have a lifetime warranty that passes on to the next owners. It's a pretty solid warranty. Why would, what, who's, who's spending $106,000 on 23 windows? Who are you? No, I'm just, I'm not, not going to money shame anybody if that's you. Maybe you love Anderson. I don't know. Good for you if that's the case. Didn't appreciate the sales tactic that went on with the person. And there are a lot of other things in line with the insane, insane cost of what they wanted to install the windows for. Like, just nuts. Being an adult is boring. Talking about freaking windows over here. All right, like I said, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life. And everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi, hope everybody's doing well, and hope you have a great weekend. Sorry if you commented on the last video and I hadn't replied to it. I'm going to try and get to those as soon as possible. They just showed up on my end because of the YouTube crashy thing when the video went out. So that's all that's about. I will be around my phone for a little bit when the video comes out, so I'll be replying to comments. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.